let's work on the pelt. This is exciting. Um, I want to blend, I'm gonna use Serafina White. I wanna blend a good bit of the colors that I want. Um, so I'm gonna use the chestnut, the natural brown, and a little bit of autumn gold to get like a lighter version. So I've got three colors here. It's only gonna take a few pulls to get it. Fairly incorporated. Okay, and then I'm gonna use the chestnut, the natural brown by themselves as we did in the beginning. And then I'm gonna do a version that has the um, smooth brown top coat in it. Chestnut. So this is our dark version. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking I wish I wish Milo would tell a joke. <laughs> yeah. That would have been helpful. Wouldn't, I wouldn't have heard it. I'm mesmerized by your blending. Wow, that's gonna be a tough one. To not, to not Can you put a rabbit sound right there? <laughs> oh wait. A rabbit. <laughs> Maybe like just a, like a little munch munch. Like a scream. <laughs> Did you see the video? I don't know what they were. They might have been Minx. Isn't that a cat? A Minx? Or well, there's Lynx. Maybe they were Lynx. The two cats that were growling at each other oh, in the road. That's terrible. Do rabbits um, make noise? Rabbits definitely have, like, all rodents have this, like, scream that they do. <laughs> all right, well, you'll have to find the rabbit sound. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to know what we're talking about. I don't know if I'm going to find it. Well, it's <laughs> Okay. Must refer to notes. Next page. Pelt and top coat details. I really didn't write very much. This isn't gonna help me very much. All right, Serafina White on both sides. Just like we did the off-white, a nice big wide piece. But this is a brighter white. Rabbits squeak and grunt. And on YouTube, there's a two hour long rabbit sound effect. Well, if you put the rabbit grunt over my burp, it's just gonna <laughs> be like, wow, Sarah's got a weird burp. <laughs> this just keeps getting more complicated. <laughs> oh, the whole reason I was mixing that other color was because I wanted to get it on the knee before I attached all of this. So I'm going to use the mid-tone one and just take a thin strip and wrap the knee so that my pelt um, shingles just blend right into that. to the body pillow. Now, keep in mind, you can stab a lot longer. You can stab, you can pause and stab. You can stab when the video's over. Um, I stab to the degree that I need to for this to take shape while we're recording this video for you. In other words, I, I am working real time and I will, I might stab a little bit more, but it just might, you might just want to do more than I do is all I'm saying, or it might take longer.
Okay, now we're ready to rock here. Oh, I was gonna make the tail. I'll do that. You're doing there, he needs more oomph. What's that? I said he needs more oomph. You're what adding you another piece of- This is Serafino white, so oh, it's a little gotcha. brighter. But yes, they need. he needs a little more of this belly. Um, Cause we didn't make the belly like a big in shape. Piece. We were yeah. making it kind of in fluff so that he can stay really yeah. um, movie. Okay. <laughs> like the little cool. Cha cha. Watch out. We need to make a superhero animal. Like a mascot. Oh, sorry, Milo. Uh. <laughs> hmm, something like a mascot. Just some animal that represents us. If only we had. Okay, tail. Piece of cake. That, that was harsh. <laughs> you could use um, caramel. You could use oats, but it's just going to get a little bit of the floof over it. Maybe I'll go a little darker at the tip of the tail. I think what you're saying is Milo needs a cape. Well, I mean, for starters, yes. And, <laughs> and anyone, no capes. Anyone watching who's feeling a little upset about the lack of recognition of the mascot, <laughs> feel free to email. <laughs> Don't email me. Email admin. Email admin. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pass it right along. <laughs> we just need more... Well, we have More Milo. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> we have Ferris. Ferris is under under utilized. Ferris could not pull off a cape. Very few of no, us could. No, no, Ferris. Actually, that hair would look pretty cool in a cape. That's that's what got me thinking. That's what that's where it came from. If only there was, was an animal that we had seven tutorials of, then we could decide what the mascot <laughs> should be. <laughs> It was me having a little action figure moment that made me think about a superhero. I like to put white fluff underneath. Not sure how accurate that is, <laughs> but that's the way I'm doing it. I dare you to look for a hair butt go no, Google don't, image. <laughs> don't do that. This is why sometimes our animals aren't <laughs> completely accurate because we don't want to go there. I'm looking up brown hair tail. There's a little white fluff under there. You got it. All right. Actually a pretty distinct dark stripe, kind of like the ear marking. Oh boy. Well. See? Oh, cool. All right, we'll go a little darker on that then. That's a nice picture. Uh, those are some that you safely those found. Those are some bulgy eyes, too. Let's see. Look at how bulgy they are. Yeah. I think my eyes aren't bulgy enough now. I think you're good. Almost done. Maybe we can. Maybe we can do it all. Oh. Okay. Now I'm going to, let's start on the chest. We're going to shingle and I have this lighter mix. And when I pull off a piece, I'll just restack it because it's not perfectly blended. And I want to work with like nice sort of one inch pieces come down the chest. This gets like two shingles on it. Definitely Google brown hairs boxing because that's some fun pictures. It is crazy. Like what are they doing? I don't is know, that they... boys? Well, okay, so that was in my notes. Hold on, let me find it. 
They can be seen standing on their hind legs boxing during the breeding season, long assumed to be males fighting each other over females, but it is, in fact, females fighting away the males. Ah, it's a male and a female dance. I mean, I guess you could call it that. Well, it's all the same. I have a, I have a saying. I have a proverb, but it's not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the late night show. <laughs> Look at they're so funny. Yeah. She's like, back off. They're kind of like miniature kangaroos. Mm-hmm. I think they are related. They have a kangaroo vibe. I'm really glad that. Aren't like the size of horses, that would be really scary. <laughs> oh, wait, no, because they're not marsupials, but maybe I don't know. Well, they're still mammals with big hind legs, they gotta be related somehow. I'm googling it. We are stabbing and stabbing and stabbing. I'm gonna put the light here, here like at the top of each leg, and then I'm gonna to switch to the middle on the sides and then the dark over the back. Okay, they're not really related at all, but the way they stand on their back feet. Mm -hmm. There is actually a kangaroo hair. Mm, yeah, it's related to the kangaroo. <laughs> It's a little Australian like wallaby that of, looks like a hare. There's tons of um, wallabies and kangaroos. Like lots and lots. Yeah. The kangaroo hare is a wallaby that looks like a hare. You're not so far off, John. I stand by what I said. Yes. Mammals share a lot of DNA. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. I stand by what I say, except for that. I stand by what I say, unless it is... Wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, we can relate. I'm always saying how we can relate the bones that we have to, yeah. like, mm. you can relate skeletal structure among animals. Somebody who knows more about this. <laughs> there are people who we'll know. Aren't our, yeah. our live felt alongs? Yeah. There are people with facts out there. Oh, man. I should have Googled this. Well, now you got to tell us what you did. Well, someone. A popular question that people also asked was, do all mammals have DNA? <laughs> See, that just makes you sad. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm sad. Shingling? Do you shingle all of him? I shingle him, yeah. Except for the top? Yeah, the top just goes over. So this piece I'm letting come down onto the thigh. It's it's a little airy right here. See? Mm-hmm. And that's okay. You're stabbing nothing. Yeah. But I'm right into the armature on this part, so. You do know how the race between the rabbit and the tortoise ended, yes? I thought I did until you just said that. Well, no, I don't remember how it ended. It, it oh, was... the tortoise won. Because the rabbit got to thought he had so much time, right? Yes, but really he won by a hair. <laughs> <laughs> I am always amazed at how I'm putting a little bit of oatmeal on the inside of the leg here just to blend it all together how 
you can have this window of time before you have to be somewhere, right? And like you're saying, ah, oh, there's a movie where they like, I over to kill time and then you overdo it and then all yeah. of a sudden you're late. Anyway, so there's this like weird time warp where things just like, the time goes by and you're like, okay, I need to go. But then when you drive, there is no, there's no time warp. There's no making up the time. Like it is always that exact, that exact, yeah. I don't know. I've had some pretty fast commutes. <laughs> <laughs> there's just all this weird like wiggle room yeah, no, when it's... you're in your home and then you get in the car and you realize there's no wiggle room very unless you're John <laughs> and it's convertible. <laughs> in 30 degrees with the top down. <laughs> It's 70 today. All right, I'm gonna do the medium one in the middle. So I have this mixed. I'm gonna try to pull it apart evenly and just do like one big shingle on each side. It's gonna need a little. All right, that didn't work. <laughs> I was trying to avoid mixing more. Well, I'll just take some of this. I think I said this in the um, snowshoe hair video. I remember talking about this and I haven't thought about it except for that video. So I'm sure that's when I said it, but rabbits go in burrows. Yes. But hares do not. They actually live above the ground. Yeah. Just kind of in a little smush down yeah. in the grass. Hares live in a smush down. Yeah. Why don't they go in a little burrow? Cause they're not rabbits. They're also primarily nocturnal. Are rabbits nocturnal? I would think not. Wait, are hairs rodents still? <laughs> Wait, is a rabbit a rodent? Well, what the, what's the definition of a rodent? Are you thinking about your hamster? Rodentia Guinea does pig? not include rabbits. Rodentia? That's the family of the I'm having a little bit of rodentia. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a medical condition, yes. yes. They are not rodents, they are legomorphs because they have four incisors in the upper jaw while rodents only have two. It's all about the incisors. That's kind of wild. Gophers are rodents and rabbits aren't. Yeah, they seem to be in a similar category. I should probably be explaining what I'm doing. I'm working on the back of the head now. Oh my. Shingling my rodent, my non rodent chef. <laughs> Don't get rodentia making your hair. <laughs> Don't get shingles either. <laughs> All right, I'll put one more here. Put one more hair. Going a little darker. Keeping in mind when I stabbed the shape that was underneath and trying to keep it going.
Shoulder shingles. Shoulder shingles. <laughs> Should I shoulder shingle? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Really obvious Dutch proverb. I'm not even sure why they called it a proverb. First you catch your hair, then you cook it. Mm, don't get that out of order. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's kind of like how your chickens hatch. I mean, I guess. But the difference is you could actually catch your chickens before they hatch. You could. You could also put them all in one basket. <laughs> At that point. Yeah. This time, I'm going right over the top. Just like that. Well, that's fun. Yeah. That's like finishing. I know. I'm trying to think. I do need a little bit more chestnut, so... But I'll put a little bit more of this into it because I want a little bit more. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm out of that color. Oh no. <sighs> that, that is an actual reseeding hairline. <laughs> <sighs> no bald spots on your hair. No That's bald not... spots. His hair needs hair. Okay, so around the thighs, I put the um, off white in there. But if you have a little extra fiber, you can. Uh, sorry, that laughing made my nose wise water, and then it made my nose run. Okay, you can stab the fluff into more of a shape. Same with along the bottom here. You can just tighten it up a little. I had a pelt in here like the snow hair and I felt like it was just getting away from me um, because they are more sculpted. Um, it was too hard to get the pelt, like the snow hair is fluffy. So it didn't matter, mm. you know, that the pelt was somewhat fluffy. It got too thick. It just got too hard to redefine the shapes, I guess, yeah. So they can be sort of flat backed like this, like when they're running or boxing, or they can be very um, curvy, like when they're. So the feet are next, and they're kind of fun to do. Um, a little fussy, but you'll see. But all of this is just more, more stabbing. Probably have I uh, have a little bit of blending to do on each side here, and instead of shingling, I'm going to just add fiber straight up and down.
And then I had a shingle on the back of the head here that I need to cover the um, fold. So yeah, this is like a, you can let this fringe travel up onto the ears and forehead to blend that even further. All right, feet. To make the feet, I'm going to use um, the pre-felt. And the front feet are going to be about inch squares. And you can put them together and then cut a little um, one side round and so round side, and then maybe just a little tapered. So this is gonna be his paw. And then the hind feet, we're gonna use about an inch wide, but about two inches long. And then make those the same and just round out the one end to make his foot. And I've got a little bit of blend left which is perfect. Oh, here's that piece that I cut earlier. That's, I'll use this. If you have um, hand carters or carter and want to throw the chestnut and the natural brown together, when you start, you can get a nice consistent um, color um, but I wanted to show it just hand blending because that's what most people that's what most people will do um, this is quite long so I'm gonna save that for the hind feet but I did have this little bit that I had cut so I'm gonna use this on the front feet such a little piece I'm just gonna pull it with my fingers and put this over. <laughs> put this just as a color over. Let's just dab it on, get it going. Okay, and then these go, usually start from the top, try to get it centered, and see if you can stab down around the armature onto the top. And then you flip it over, and just bring each fringy edge real tight if you can to the leg you can see i have about a quarter inch of the shape coming off the end of the toe that's because um you'll see but we want that to create the toes so you need that overhang and then this you just kind of want to curl in around the foot just tease the fibers around the base of the foot. So then the real like foot-like <laughs> part starts when we um, begin to dent to make the toes. <clears throat> and you might need to switch to a single needle. So I stab down the center and then I stab another dent on each side There we go, to make 
the outer toes. So it's like a foot mitten, a <laughs> paw mitten, and then you make a little paw glove. Yes. Nice analogy. So we wrap the foot in dark gray. So we'll see, these feet are a little darker than I've been making. Um, we'll see if the, if the dark gray pulls out with the reverse needle. It's not showing up really. I did it pretty well on my other ones. But like I said, I think this fiber is darker. So it's not really showing up. But either way, it's nice to get some of the fiber out and then stab it back in because it really secures this piece that you've added now to the foot. But this makes a nice hair foot shape without getting into, um, without getting into single toes. At this size, that would be very difficult. So the mitten to glove <laughs> technique <laughs> is, is good, I think. And then on the leg, um, you can put, if you have a little bit of fiber, it doesn't take much at all. Um, and you don't want it to look real wrapped, but um, you could try to go vertically. It's a little skinny, but just a real loose um, sort of tone of the colors that are gonna bring together your pelt and your foot. This is a great time for the reverse needle too, when you wanna um, get rid of stripes and stuff and get this narrow area looking a little more um, natural. First needles feel weird, like you're fighting. Yeah, it is bizarre. Okay, so here's my other foot. Um, I'll just show the beginning of that process again, and then I'll do a hind foot so that you can see um, it's exactly the same, it's just a slightly different shape. So we'll do this one, get it going, and then switch to the hind feet. So get it centered, and then turn it over, bring each edge around tightly. your little mitten by just by teasing the fibers in. You don't want to pull them too tight because you want there to be some give when you go to make your um, when you go to make your toe shapes. All right, I will finish this one up shortly and I'll show you the um, the hind foot works just the same way. I'm gonna put a tiny bit more um, dark gray on this toe. It's just a little bald and I want it to be nice and full under there. Oh, I didn't build my feet. Alrighty, 
this is pretty, now that I'm towards the end, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix a slightly lighter color with the autumn gold in it for the hind feet. They're gonna be a little different than the front feet, but that's okay. Maybe I'll put a little bit of the darker color at the tip. This fiber is not cut in half, which is good because it, there's a little more to getting around the hind legs than the front legs. So I've got the full width of the staple length going across this sheet. Even a hair will bite when it is cornered. Is that a fact or a proverb? <laughs> that is a proverb, <clears throat> but probably a fact. Do we have hair? I mean, I think we do out west, but I don't know that we do in the eastern part of the country. Don't they have them in like the prairie or the Midwest? Yeah, maybe in the Midwest. They're native to Europe and parts of Asia. And yeah, they like temperate, open. Much across the western half of the US and south into Mexico. So again, I want the, um, I want the shape to come off the end of the toe a little bit. So that when I fold it around, it's got some give. Oh, I got crooked. All right, let's see here. Straighten that out there, pull that over there. Good, good, good. So this is great because it, it does make their foot like wider and bigger, which is what they are. So start with one side and then move to the other. This should come right up to the hock. This definitely seems easier than if you were trying to make a shape to do that. Like without the pre-felt, seems like it would get super thick. Yeah, yeah, I think the pre-felt has been helpful in this project. So just pulling these in like a little dumpling, just tucking those edges in. That's a nice looking foot already. Then we gotta make our dents. We need to name this toe inversions. <laughs> <laughs> no. So is stuck to the stabatitis. <laughs> I like too the way this kind of gets that it gets that bump that they have in their where their toes are and then on this instead of wrapping I'm gonna try just a little fiber down the side maybe maybe a slight angle so it's easier to stab on looking very good. Cool. I feel like he's a little, he's a little splotchy. I think if I, you know, I think taking your time in the blending or using hand carters is, is good. But yeah, I like that. Um, I really like the look of that foot. 
I don't do any kinds of, I don't know if they have pads under their feet. I don't do anything like that on these, on these guys. It's looking like a million bucks, <laughs> like a million hair. What's a male hair? Is it a buck? Oh, I don't know. I was going with million hair. <laughs> I think they might be dough and bucks. I'm not sure though. All right, I've got a little more work to do, but you've seen everything. I'm gonna put the other foot on. I'm gonna tighten up my, um, my leg colors and feet, and I need to finish this eye. Uh, looks like they're Jacks and Jills. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Using your hairbrush there. <laughs> I, I could really handle this. We don't need you. I'm coming anyway. <laughs> I was fixing my hairs. Well, you gotta check the hair. Which one did we just make? This one. Well, look, they're boxing. <laughs> so because I didn't totally take my time blending my um, fiber, I used the, the clover, um, this little rake tool, and I, I kind of combed it, and that remixed stuff, and then I stabbed it some more, and I might do that again, like just to get everything a little more unified. And I got a little more work to do on the legs, but okay. I'm running out of steam over here. Well, you did a lot. Yeah. Looks very cool. Yeah, so I hope you guys will share your projects on our Facebook group. It's called Serafina Felting Fanfare. And we share our projects, ask questions, you know, show off a little on there. And what else do I need to let everybody know about? The hair supply pack, yeah. And the, like I said, it's a level three to four. So that'll kind of... I think it's not so much the techniques as it is evolving, like kind of your eyes and sculpting and using your reference pictures. That's that's the part that's a little trickier. Kind of like the cat, but not as hard as the cat. Oh, the cat. <laughs> so thanks for joining us and we'll uh, see you soon, I hope. Bye.